Welcome to Beverages, Bites, and Banter. This is a show where Spencer and I talk about the most important things in life, things like coffee and whiskey and technology, things like important life lessons we've learned over the years. Basically, almost any topic is fair game. Today, though, we're joined by my friend Randy Evans of Evans Brothers Coffee, which is based in Sandpoint, Idaho. Randy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good yeah. to be here. Spencer, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. I'm on vacation in Destin, Florida. So I oh, nice. Clear weather. Fantastic. Fantastic. Sweet. Now, on to the most important questions. What are both y'all drinking? Randy, you go first. What are you drinking today? I'm drinking a Kenya Kamwanji AB. Really delicious. One of our kind of micro lot reserve coffees that we carry for a limited time. Yeah, delicious coffee. It's got some nice like red currant fruit flavors, a little chocolate, super balanced. Ooh. Kenya classic Kenya profile. Actually, it's really good. What's what's the difference in the AA and the AB? I don't know if I've heard of the Kenya AB. Uh, it's it's more referring to the screen size of the bean, not necessarily quality, but an A like a double A would be a larger size bean, and the AB is a little bit smaller. But, uh, you know, sometimes the ABs or the smaller beans are actually better than the larger beans at times. Yeah, I can imagine they might get more flavor kind of. Than yeah, the- yeah. Sort of like almost like when you think of like a pea berry coffee, it's really <laughs> condensed, you know, flavor. So, yeah, it's delicious. Every time I hear Randy talk about coffee, <laughs> what are you? I realize yeah. I know nothing about coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I've learned a lot on my own, but not that much. That's, that sounds fantastic. Well, and, and the classification of, of, with coffee is different, you know, everywhere dependent upon where that coffee is coming from, how they classify and stuff. So, Very cool. Very cool. Spencer, what you drinking, bud? Well, since I'm on vacation, I am double fisting today. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's a way to go on vacation. Oh, my goodness. my goodness. That's right. That's right. So, All right. The, nice. the good old four batch, four rows of small batch, my wife's favorite, and my mom loves it too, and I'm with my mom. So, and then drinking a Tennessee local, because that's where my parents are from, so a Chattanooga whiskey. Wow. And even though this is only 5.5% more proof, whew, it's got a uh, burn. But it's dang, very nice. I'm a little jealous right now. <laughs> it's only 10 in the morning out here. I'm, I'm not quite there yet. I say it's a good... If it was afternoon, yeah, I would It's a good choice to go with coffee then, Randy. <laughs> I don't. I don't really condone morning yeah. drinking that much. <laughs> might, might be pretty. Just every now. Well, if it's really might not be so productive. So. Today, but I actually do have a little stash of oh, a, a little stash behind of a piece of, that of. Oh yeah, so yeah it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Good a little stuff. bit of tequila in that coffee goes a long way. <laughs> Oh man, I, I can't. Mm, I don't know if you want to mess that Kenyan AB. I, I can't that. adulterate no, my okay. coffee. You know, I just. <laughs> so I too have a beverage today, shockingly. And uh, here's here you go. See that color in there? This is actually. Mm, that's got some nice yeah. caramel. Oh, it smells so good. So this is uh, this is a local to Austin here. So I'm in Austin, Texas, and this what? is they have really oh, cool. cool labels. My wife loves their labels, so I wow, can't get that fuzziness to go away. Anyway, still Austin. Is, is who makes yep. this still Austin here in Austin, Texas. It is a cognac cask strength, and okay, and it's delicious. You guys brought me some of that still Austin whiskey. It was delicious as a gift. I think last summer when you came out to visit, it was really really tasty yeah, whiskey. We did Perfect. actually, and that that kind of leads yeah. us in well, Randy, about you know how we met. So so Evans Brothers <laughs> and Randy are located in Sandpoint, Idaho, which is where I used to live before I moved to Austin. So I lived there for about a decade. And and so we met there and I'm pretty sure Randy knows everyone in town. A, a pretty accurate statement, Randy. <laughs> it's a small town. It's not hard to get to know everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then running. And we're very public. You're running like yeah. the best coffee yeah. place by far in town. Sorry to all the other coffee places there, but. For me, it's my favorite. Jim sent me some several years ago. It was it was great. Appreciated yeah. him. Yeah, Thank so you. cool. So we met in, in, in Sandpoint, and Randy loves to ski. 
And so with Evans Brothers, like all of their mm-hmm. coffees, are pretty much all of them are, are ski related, like the names, right? Yeah, we named most of our blends off of Schweitzer ski runs that we loved and just kind of made sense at the time. And I think that was a good move because a few years later, when Schweitzer Mountain, they were looking for new coffee roasters, they wanted to work with local roasters. I think that gave us a leg up already having some mm-hmm. blend names after Very their wise. ski runs. So that was a good, I think. A good move. But yeah, no, we love the ski. And that's why we live here in Sandpoint. It's it's just, you know, as you know, Jim, it's just a really special, beautiful place. Schweitzer Mountains, 20, 25 minutes from my doorstep. And and, and then we have this just beautiful Lake Ponderé. And it's just gorgeous here in the summertime. We do have to suffer through a lot of gray. This, this has been a brutal winter. You know, we've had a lot of not enough snow as most places out West and just a lot of just kind of crappy, foggy mm. days. Yeah, it's amazing. So it's an amazing place. First of all, it's stunningly beautiful for anyone listening. Just look it up online. Sandpoint is all one word, Sandpoint, Idaho. And go to you know mm. Google Images and just take in some of those incredible images. It's an amazing place. But yeah. Sometimes those winters are a bit rough when you don't have great snow. There is a, a lot of gray and dreary. And it's actually kind of one of the reasons that yep. led us away from it for a little while. We like to go, uh, love to go back I'm, and hope we can get back there longer. We had a, we had a, you know, there's a couple months, December and January, where we're just like, why the fuck did we move here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are we yeah. doing? This is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and then summer comes and you completely forget. But yeah, and then you have those days that are just so magnificent, just beautiful. Like, I mean, stunningly gorgeous area. And, you know, so it kind of makes it, I guess, it, yeah, you know, hopefully it keeps some people from moving here. I think a lot of people come up in the summertime, they discover the beauty and they decide to move up here and they don't last very long. You know, they're just like, oh my God, I had no idea. The sun sets at 3.45 p.m., you know, on the winter solstice. Yeah, I remember I That's remember brutal. working and I'd wake up and I'd start working and it was pitch black out, right? And then I'd get done working yeah. and it was pitch black out. I'm like, okay, <laughs> worked my whole day. There's no daytime. It was gone. Yeah. Right. Well, cool. Right. Well, let's, let's switch topics a little bit and let's talk about what we're really here for. I'd love to talk more about Evans Brothers. And yeah. what's awesome about Evans Brothers? Why is it so good? So, I mean, I'd, I'd have to start with the people that work here. When you, you know, come into you know, our two locations, we have our roastery, our flagship store, cafe, and roastery here in Sandpoint. This is where we started. And then about six years ago, we opened another cafe in Coeur d'Alene. And I think, you know, there's just a vibe that you, that you feel. It's, a, it's a definitely a locals place. It's a place, you know, that just brings community together. And our staff, we just have a really good crew of people. Many of them have been with us for a long time. I mean, we have, you know, you know, Daniel's been with us for like 12 years and several of our key players have been, been around for a long time. They're, they're bought into the mission of what we're trying to do. And, and it's just fun. You know, we geek out all the time. We geek out on coffee. Like I, I feel so lucky to do what I do every day and to come into work and, you know, running a business can be stressful for sure, but like, I haven't lost my enthusiasm for just coffee and the people. And then, you know, another thing I think that sets us apart, I mean, there's not that there's not a lot of roasters doing this already, but I think we have a really great coffee sourcing program where we travel regularly to origin to connect with the producing partners that we work with. And I think that translates into quality as well in the cup and really understanding our product intimately. And when it comes to connecting with our producers and knowing our product, I think we we put our money where our mouth is in that. And and it's a lot of fun and it keeps us motivated to just do a better job and to try to honor the producers that we work with and to showcase them and bring them to the forefront. Yeah. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah. And I I can totally testify to the the crew that you have working there. So, you know, I lived there for about a decade and the best way to experience Evans Brothers Coffee is going to the roastery, to the shop right there. And they're really great people who not only work at Evans Brothers, but again, it's a small community and there's a lot of really awesome people in the community. 
So Evans Brothers has really become kind of like yeah. this, little, this gathering hub for so many of the locals there. It's just a great, yeah. it's a great experience. Yeah, thank you. Just to kind of paint a picture of our location of in Sandpoint, we're in an old granary kind of warehouse building. Mm -hmm. And when we were looking for spaces, initially we just wanted to roast coffee. And this is my brother and I starting the business and we'll probably backtrack a little bit about why we started doing this, but the space is really unique. It's rustic. It's, it's this metal warehouse building and there's a huge granary tower. And when we decided on this location, there was really nothing going on in this little, little area. Like a lot of these buildings and stuff were empty on this block. And we kind of renamed it, so, you know, like unofficially the Granary Arts District. And I think it attracted, you know, artists. And now there's a brewery that opened right next to us. And, you know, they even said they're like, we wouldn't be here if Evans Brothers wasn't here. And that feels really cool because this whole granary and the old co-op building that we're in was at one point sort of a, you know, important focal area of town. And and I think we brought new life in, into this this little zone that we're in. And that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before we get further, I, I just want to give you an opportunity to let people know how they can get some of your coffee if they want to try it. Yeah. Um, so our website is evansbrotherscoffee.com. That's E-V-A-N-S brotherscoffee.com. And we have, you know, a ton of blends on there, a ton of single origins. We're rotating coffees frequently, bringing in new, exciting things all the time. And uh, yeah, that's probably yeah. the best way. For awesome. And I think uh, you mentioned, yeah. you know, you take trips, you visit the the folks who are growing the coffee. Don't mm -hmm. you publish or, or post yeah. on your website also photos and mm -hmm. information about those trips sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I, I got to get this blog post out soon. That's sort of on on my list from from Sumatra. I was able to go to Sumatra in November and that was pretty pretty cool, really unique experience. Very far travels to go there, but I, I mean, I just fell in love with that origin. I, I it, Previously, I was never a big fan of Sumatra coffees, but now <laughs> I am. Now I'm like, I get it. I understand why they do the the wet hold process that's unique to, to that country. And yeah, so you can find more information if you kind of dig dig deep into the website. Rick, my brother, and our manager from Coeur d'Alene just got back from Costa Rica. They were connecting with some producers that we have bought coffee from in the past and maybe some new ones that we'll likely bring in as well. And then Daniel, we're sending Daniel to Guatemala. He's leaving in a couple of weeks to Guatemala. So it's awesome, you know, some good travel this year. We were kind of like backlogged on that with yeah. covid for a couple of years, mm -hmm. couldn't really travel. And so now it's nice to kind of get back and go connect with the people. And it's so, it's so rewarding. And, and you see the excitement from the producers when they meet us and, and talk to us and, and just, you know, getting to understand their challenges a little more. And it's just extremely motivating. When we get the coffee, there's already been so much work done. You know, we get the kind of the credit, like selling the coffee to the customer, getting to see their reaction, but it really belongs to the producers, you know? And, and their work. So yeah. Roasting's important too, but I have a question for you, Randy. Yeah. So Guatemala is one of my favorite regions for coffee. Oh, especially. Cool. I love single origins because I love the chocolatey richness and some of the berry that comes out. It's not rich in berry, but there's some notes and citrus, sure. but the yeah. chocolate is my favorite. What's, what's one of y'all put you on the spot. What's your favorite region? If you have one or maybe a couple I, I, you know, there's, Let's, if I had just come back from Guatemala, like I went last, like I would, you know, be like, you know, I'm in love with those coffees as well. I love that chocolate and the caramel and the blackberry mm -hmm. that you get, but I'm, I'm really, I love the East African coffees the most. I love Ethiopia mm. coffees. I love Kenya coffees. It's, you know, Ethiopia is the birthplace of coffee. So they have all these just unique, almost like unnamed coffee varieties that you don't get anywhere else a lot of heirloom varieties of coffee out there and, yeah. and so it's just fascinating and, and they're just like ethiopian coffees just tend to be like kind of elegant and just beautiful and tea-like yeah. almost 
It was really a well sun-dried Yurgachev that got me into Civil nice. Origin Coffee. Yeah, so like a natural process. Yeah, sun-dried Yurgachev. Yeah, fantastic. I, I love that too. And those are really great. I love those naturals from Ethiopia are really great. And, and an espresso blend or even as a single origin, it's just got that syrupy body to it. And I love I love natural processed coffees. And, and we get some from Costa Rica as well, naturals and honey processed. Yeah, it's awesome. Cool. Well, so yeah, those are my favorite East East Africa. That's what I love. What I'd love to know yeah. a little bit more about Randy is a little bit of the backstory on Evans Brothers Coffee. So there's a lot of people that love coffee, sure. but few okay. people are bold enough to be like, okay. you know, what? I'm going to start my own coffee business. Right. So how did all right. this start? It. Yeah. So my wife and I we lived on Maui back in the early 2000s. We just kind of we were living in Bellingham, Washington, and and we were sick of the rain, and we'd honeymooned on Maui, and we decided, <laughs> oh, let's just move here. You know, we're in our early 20s, and. And uh, so we made that leap and I was supposed to start in the Maui dive shop like that week, I think that I got there and she was a school teacher. So she had a job teaching school at the middle school. And three days after we arrived, 9-11 happened. And so nobody was flying for a while. If you guys remember that, it was it was kind of a weird, I mean, a very weird time. And, and so we weren't sure we were going to be able to make it, make it work. And I just was looking for jobs anywhere I could find. And there was, they were opening the Honolulu coffee, which had five or six locations on Oahu was opening their first Maui location. And they were already under construction. And I think maybe he had a manager and that manager fell through, but they put it out there. I, I applied, got the job to open and manage that first Maui location, had a lot of autonomy and it was a great company to work for because they were very focused, you know, on high end specialty. And I just connected with the, with the owner and, and, and it just had a lot of fun. You know, I did that for like three years and, and he, he brought me to the specialty coffee, the SCAA, Specialty Co Coffee Association of America. Now it's the SCA to Atlanta in like 2003. And I just saw the industry for what it was and it was just fascinating to me i mean it was like everybody that has anything to do with the coffee industry was there and so i fell in love with with that wanted to learn more wanted to get into roasting and then we went back to the mainland and eventually i got a job with a company in Bain on bainbridge island called storyville coffee and i started mm -hmm. out as the apprentice roaster there and then became the head roaster for that company you know i was just trying to educate myself learn as much as i could i was you know Prior to that, I was like geeking out, home roasting. And so, yeah, I did that for a few years. And then I ended up taking a job in Sandpoint for an equipment manufacturer. And we moved our family. Like my, our daughter, our oldest daughter was like two. And then our youngest was just born. And this was another one of those, like, you know, it was, it was an equipment manufacturer for the coffee industry, coffee roaster manufacturer. It was a good job. I took a sales job and... Then all of a sudden, the like right after I started, the housing market collapsed, the housing bubble, 2008. And I lasted like three months and got laid off over Thanksgiving. And it was brutal, you know. I mean, even the week that I started, like they were laying people off. And I had the, I was the new sales guy, all this pressure. And, you know, these things just weren't selling at that time. So long story short, I had already bought my season pass. My brother, he comes into the picture as well. So he was, he had kind of like resort sales background. He was the director of sales at the Four Seasons in Santa Barbara. He also lived on Maui, worked for Grand Wailea Resorts, worked for Hyatt, things like So he had that background. Then he was kind of doing real estate. And he was like, what's a cool ski town that you guys would think about moving to? And so this is backtracking, but I said Sandpoint, Idaho. And so he moved his young family out here around the same time. Yeah. And it was cool. We hadn't lived in the same town for like 10 years at least. And, and he's just two, two years older. And so obviously real estate slowing down for him as well. We're riding this, the chairlift up at Schweitzer. And he's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I, I want to stay in Sandpoint and you know, I, I want to stay in specialty coffee. This is what I love to do. And he was like, why don't we put a business plan together, you know, and see if we can get a small business loan, borrow a little money, you know, from parents to help us get started, that kind of thing. And so, you know, I couldn't believe it, but we, we did, we put a business plan together and we were able, and we worked with a business coach and everything. And, and, and we got a small business loan to get, get a roaster and get started. And uh, so it was really just kind of organic. Didn't know what I, I had the experience of working for other companies. I learned what I didn't want to do and, and what I wanted to do. But 
it was, you know, you see a lot of these companies, they come in, they have no coffee experience, but they look around at these really cool sort of third wave coffee shops and they get a ton of money and they do this beautiful build out. That wasn't us. Like that was like, we were just like scraping by, you know, organic, like we didn't, we didn't borrow enough money from the bank, you know, to grow that quickly. But in hindsight, I think that might've been good because we learned a lot, you know, and, and, and we kind of grew a little more organically and our customers grew with it. And we made improvements to our roastery as we could afford to do it. And then, so initially we were just wholesale roasting. And then eventually a couple of years into it, we we're like, there was enough interest in what we were doing locally. We're like, well, let's, you know, build out a little espresso bar, you know, and threw $10,000 towards this kind of shitty little build out. And, but it was unique and, and people started coming in and, and then we just kept making improvements and, and, and trying to get better. And we did a rebrand and, and uh, yeah, here we are 15 years later, you know, I can't believe it. It seems like it just flew That's by. Amazing. But, yeah, it um, sounds like yeah, you could have been victimized by all of those changes in life, but you made it like a beautiful blessing and just I know it's really, like, not just for you, but the community. Totally. It is. It's really cool. The community really embraced what we were doing. And, and uh, yeah, it, it's it feels really good when, you know, you see it like, you know, Christmas time or whatever. People come in or, or somebody's family is visiting and they want to bring them somewhere kind of unique in Sandpoint. They bring them to Evans Brothers. We're one of the stops, you know, and I, I, I think that's really cool like I said before, like we've got a great team and we're all kind of like, we kind of lift each other up and, and, you know, it's just fun to have passionate people around that you work with that keep you motivated and excited. And they're, they're completely bought into what we're doing as well. And yeah, it's, it's super fun. We're going to, you know, leaving tomorrow, going to Portland for roast summit, me and Daniel and, and Emily, another one of our roasters and looking forward to that. Just kind of two day geeking out workshops and, seminars and stuff so now don't, don't yeah. you guys yeah. win awards That's, fairly regularly we've done we've done pretty well yeah we've won a bunch of golden bean awards and good food awards i appreciate you bringing that up because we're really proud of the good food awards so this was these are a couple of them from i don't know where we won last year a good food award we won our first one in 2013 another in 2016 we won last year and we're a finalist now and we may or may not be a winner and we'll find out here in a couple months so i think april they announced the winners so is that good food for food or good food for the coffee division Tell so good food know. awards has several categories like beer wine it's it's a it's kind of like the oscars of the slow food movement of craft food movement like seriously check it out if you haven't it's 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 badass. Like it's the ceremony is it, you know, started in San Francisco and now it's the ceremonies in Portland in April. And we went, we've gone each time. It's a black tie affair. You know, you get your awards on stage. You have really cool keynote speakers, Alice Waters. She's sort of like uh, the grandmother of the sort of slow food movement. She was a keynote speaker one year and, and it's just a lot of fun. It's celebrating just craft, you know, craft producers and and so it's, it would be beer, wine, chocolate, charcuterie, preserves, yeah. coffee. Like there's, there's ton of different categories and it's a really difficult award to win because there's thousands of submissions and what our region for the winners, I think there's maybe what 15 winners total out of at least probably a thousand submissions. And our region is the Northwest primarily. So it'd be like Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, Alaska. So, I mean, as you can imagine, there's a lot of great roasters out here in the Northwest that we're competing with. And so to, to get one of these awards is sort of just validation for a lot of hard work and going, yeah, we, we do roast pretty damn good coffee. You yeah. know, it feels so good. I'm in Newcastle, Washington now, and your coffee is way better than anything I've found in Seattle. So. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to have to plan out. a little trip to come see you guys and stop yeah, by please. the other good food places on the way. Please do. do my little yeah. diners, drive-ins, and dies right. with this food award place. You know, just... next time you're in the grocery store, you'll see that little emblem too, the good food awards. People will put that on their packaging, good food award finalist, good food award winner. And yeah, I definitely encourage you to check it out online and just see what's what's going on on there. And it's it's just a great thing. So we're, we're pretty stoked to have won some of those awards. Mm -hmm. and, we got the first one in 2013, sort of when they first started, and then didn't get another in 12, 2016. And then we were 
maybe a finalist one or two years. And it took a while to get that third one, you know, and, and it was 2023 and it was like, all right. And then I think we might get one again. So I'm pretty stoked yeah. about that. Congratulations. That's phenomenal. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'd love to tap into your knowledge a little bit about coffee. So I think Spencer yeah. has already mentioned he loves single origins. Personally, I make a lot of espresso at home, mm-hmm. and I really prefer blends when I make espresso, generally. Cool. generally. Occasionally, yeah. there's been yeah. some amazing single origins that I've made as espresso, usually mm-hmm. on your recommendation, Randy, actually. And those are the ones that turn out really right. good. And then, of course, there's some single origins yeah. that I try and make espresso out of. And I'm like, mm, I don't think I'll do that again. So talk me through yeah. single origin versus it. blend and, you know, what's the, what do you think about this whole, for, you know, drip versus espresso? Is there one that lends itself better? Do you have any favorites? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I like some of the bright, like for me, like if I'm brewing a cup of coffee at home, I usually like a, a nice single origin. I just like to taste that coffee specifically from that farm kind of, you know, and, and I, and I think in those terms when I'm tasting coffee a little bit. And so it's just exciting to see what, you know, what flavors come out of a particular single origin. And, and yeah, it, so for me, that reason, to me, Randy, it's the same way. It's like a fine wine, like a Santa Barbara right. wine, versus a Napa wine versus South America. Totally. You taste the soil and the climate. hundred percent. And like, in the same thing with wine, like, yeah, there's some amazing blends, you know, out there, but yeah, I usually go towards like a Cabernet or some, you know, something like that from a particular estate. And so similar with coffee, however, there's, there's blends are not to like, there's an art to creating a good blend. And the purpose to me for a blend is to create an experience that a customer can return to again and again. And so it's just having that, that consistency and, you know, it's your signature. It's like, okay, this is our breakfast blend. This is our, you know, this is our dark roasted big timber and people really love those, you know? And so the, the, you try to be really consistent. A lot of single origins we may book for, you know, coffee seasonal. It, it, theoretically has a shelf life. Once it's harvested and dried to the 12% moisture in the green coffee, you can hold it for a year, but this starts to fade over time, right? So like, you know, coffee that, that first arrives, say from Guatemala that we get and we taste it and it's, you know, cupping really good, scoring 87, 80 points in another six months, that might fade a little bit. It's still going to be good, but it's not as, you know, it's not as vibrant. It's not as fresh. And so coffee seasonal. And so with a blend, it allows you to have that consistent flavor year round where you can work with different coffees in that blend so that you're not sort of locked into, you know, the, a, a coffee that's fading, for example. So if we have a, we have a bean that's in a blend that starts to fade a little bit, we'll find something else that could bring similar character to that blend and just try to try to keep it consistent. And yeah, so I don't have like, I, I agree with you, Jim. I like I've lately, like I do a lot of single origin espresso as well, but lately I just love coming back to our Headwall espresso and tasting that. It's delicious. Yeah. I, I really, I, I love where, where it's hitting right now. Yeah. appreciate it. And then so I just, what's, what's in your Headwall espresso? Cause I haven't had that. I'm curious, like the yeah. trip around the world, it takes you on the notes. Sure. Yeah. So the head wall is it's Guatemala, Weiwei Tenango from it's organic Guatemala from the Weiwei Tenango region, as well as a little bit of Brazil, like soft, nutty Brazil to kind of soften it up, maybe 20%. And then we also have two Ethiopian coffees in that blend right now, a washed Ethiopian as well as a natural Ethiopian. It's so, so it's just like, it's a well-rounded, <laughs> yeah, thank it's you. Every, it's everything I want. And- <laughs> I'm over here doing more and more. It's hitting, to me, it's hitting the money right now too. Like right now, like there's times, you know, where the blend, it kind of strays and, you know, you're, it's all the coffee so elusive. You're always chasing after it. And, you know, and, and it's like, I love it when it's just like hits all the marks, you know, and I feel I'll like that's what it's going right to so, order up some. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit more yeah. about Evans Brothers. So. Where are you going from here, right? You've got a couple yeah. of stores. You have two stores right now? Mm-hmm. We have two locations. We had opened a third one, as you know, in Spokane, and that was really tough timing. That was, <laughs> yeah, literally like it was November that we opened, like Thanksgiving, and then COVID hit like three months later or something. And then we had to, 
we had to close for a while and reopen and just some challenges and it wasn't the, the, the greatest location. So we did we did close that. Right now we're really just focusing on our wholesale. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on right now this year. Like I feel we're gonna experience some pretty pretty good growth on the wholesale front. The cool thing is the last two years or like two years ago, we were able to buy the building that we're in. So sort of the five-year plan is to really make some big improvements to to grow our roastery operations and, and move them down to the farther end of the building. And just, it allows us some room to really grow and expand. We're kind of busting at the seams in the space that we're in right now. So I'm excited Every year when I head back to Sandpoint, yeah. <laughs> there's just this line of people every day just waiting to, yeah. waiting to get their coffee yeah. and delicious baked goods. Yeah, summertime. Yeah. You have this coffee can there yeah. that is like ridiculous. That's that's the one thing awesome. that every time yeah. I go back, I'm like, all right, we're getting some coffee and I'm getting one of these coffee cakes right. <laughs> from, from Evans. Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's it's it's cool. Yeah, it's it's been fun for sure. You know, as far as opening more locations, if the right location came along, it's not something we're actively seeking out right now. We're this year our focus is really I think that's wise. So, I've also mentioned to you yeah. many times that I really feel like there should be a Evans Brothers South edition really really far south like yeah right next to me in austin here <laughs> like austin Texas. <laughs> love it let's talk some more <laughs> it's so necessary here there are a lot of there's a lot of great coffee in austin don't get me wrong some fantastic roasters here. yeah there really is yeah, yeah. but there's yeah. not a lot of fantastic yeah. coffee shops out where i live so mm -hmm. i would love to have Brothers right down the there's road. still but there's still still room for more in that area a tremendous yeah. room yeah. i mean austin is such a foodie town you know i just love it and it's cool that you know coffee in the southeast like i remember my parents live in charleston south carolina and i remember going there well we lived there after maui we went there for like two years when our daughter was born and we wanted to live near family and and I just remember like the beer kind of sucked. There was no good beer after coming from like the Northwest scene and, <laughs> and there was no good coffee at all around there. And now you go back and it's like, oh my God, there's so many breweries, like just really good craft breweries. And now there's some good coffee in Charleston as well. I imagine, you know, Austin's kind of similar. Austin's such a, you know, and, and Charleston's a foodie town, you know? So I was surprised it took as long as it did for that movement to, but now it's there and it's it's you know pretty saturated and honestly with particularly with the beer yeah i think that i think the east coast seemed for me you know i i grew up on the east coast actually i think the east coast lagged yeah. the whole coffee scene and, and i don't really know why but mm -hmm. every time i would go back to almost anywhere on the east coast it was a struggle to find right really high quality small coffee roasters as I was used to you yeah. know, living in the Pacific Northwest. Right. And so it's really great to see that that's changing, yeah. right? There's been so many more uh, all up and down yeah. the East Coast now. It, it took a little yeah, while, but for it's sure. happening now. It's good. I wonder why that is. I mean, I remember, yeah, in Charleston, it was like everybody drank sweet tea. I'm like, you don't drink coffee? You just <laughs> no, drink that's sweet tea. southern thing. I, I, I'm not going to criticize the sweet tea. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a southern. No, you I, mainline like that stuff. Also, I, I tend to cut half sweet and half unsweet because it's a little overly sweet for me personally. But, I, you know, right. I almost think that, right. like, Dunkin' Donuts kind of had a lock on the East Coast. Like, there were, like, there were major chains yeah. that had sort of a lockdown on coffee on the East Coast, and it took a while for people to start experiencing other, other things, I think. Yeah. That's, that's my guess, personally, just from seeing, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you yeah. drive up the highway, and every rest stop is Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. It was like Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Massive. Yeah, but yeah. that's that's also marketing to the mind versus you yeah. know actually tasting. Right? Yeah, for sure. There's a great. You ever watch? You ever watch that food show? Like, and it will feature like Hershey's chocolate and how they originate and sort of recreate it. There's one episode. Yep. I forget what food that built America or something like that. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen it's that. a great show. Yeah, it's a good show. And there's one about the whole Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks. You know, kind of almost like a little battle after a while. The Dunkin' Donuts, of course, was on the scene for, for much longer, but then all of a sudden Howard Schultz sort of comes out of nowhere. It's an interesting episode, actually. I like that one. Yeah, Spencer and I had a little conversation on our last episode about Starbucks. I think it was on our last episode about yeah. 
the state of roasting yeah, I remember. and how heavily roasted right. those beans were. And you know, yeah. I love the sweet yeah. sugary drinks that you can make with those really heavily sure. roasted beans. But um, all sure. those other yeah. great flavors seem to disappear, yeah. right? All the great flavors that, that you like, yeah. you know, I'm just going to give you huge props here. You're a super talented coffee roaster, right? You get amazing flavors out of, you have a great raw ingredient, but at the end of the day, if the right person isn't roasting it, they're never going to get that out of right. those beans. And you do it. You got to coax yeah, them you out. Do it. Yeah. So kudos. Yeah. That's, you know, when I asked you a long time ago, that. what makes Evans Brothers Coffee so special, you're very humble. Part of that is you, right? It's you roasting. So, yeah. and now you've taught some of the other folks there Thanks. how to become, yeah. I would call them master roasters because yeah. I don't know any I think Daniel, Daniel, <laughs> Daniel's better than I am now. You know? That's great. It's like, because it, we can kind of feed off of each other and are you tasting this? Are you getting a no? You know, and it's, and, and then you kind of learn to, when you do it a lot with somebody, you kind of, you know, you have a similar language in how you describe what you're tasting. Well, yeah. we talked about Vegas. So you go to the strip and get, you know, the bottom barrel of the wine, the wine shelf coffee, uh-huh. or you can go to the really expensive restaurants and get stuff that's right. not even as good as Evan Brothers. I've tasted right. it. And so it's, I mean, the want. way I, I, I kind of look at coffee, like there is a, there is a place for dark roast. Like I, you know, and, and you're right, Jim, I think it like, if you're going to put some cream and sugar in your coffee, that's dark roast is going to do better than some like, you know, Ethiopian kind of fruity just depends on how you like to drink it. But it, 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 to me, it feels a bit like ordering like a Japanese Wagyu steak and getting it well done. You know, (laughs) it's like, yeah, exactly. Right. All that amazingness just kind of disappears in that cooking process. Right. For sure. Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, Listen, we, I think we've had a great conversation for today. Randy, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, this has been fun, man. I'll, I'll do this anytime, man. Next time, let's do it a little later, and I'll, and I'll start sipping some whiskey Oh, we're definitely going to well. line that up, because then it'll just it'll get a lot of fun. So if we all do this a little bit later, then we can <laughs> yeah. drink a little bit more, except for Spencer, who is you know on vacation. I'll just be on vacation again. <laughs> so let's... Can I can I ask you like what 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 was the impetus for starting this podcast? You know, oh, sure. Kind of started. Yeah, recently, so I'll, right? I'll give my answer. Yeah. Spencer can can give his. Do you, do you guys both work together and like? Yeah. So so yeah. we covered a little bit about this ahead. in our first episode, but to to cut it really short, Spencer and I met a long time ago. Spencer was a customer for one of the software companies that I worked for. And we got paired up to help Spencer right. create an, an amazing presentation at, at a conference. And Spencer crushed that and, yeah. and was was just a fantastic customer. And we became good friends over the years, bonded over coffee. And we've been talking a lot recently. And we're like, we should really just start to record some of these conversations because we like to share a lot of our life lessons oh, yeah. and, our, and, and our passions. We're like, you know, somebody might be interested in this. Maybe we'll find out. So yeah. that's kind of how it got here. I'm going to start tuning. I'm going to start tuning in. How how often will you release a new episode? Is that going to be weekly? Yeah, it's or? going to be weekly. So that's the intent here, and we have okay. lots of other guests lined up. That you know, we've met a lot of people cool. in our very long careers. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so much gray hair now. Yeah. It's amazing. Very cool. Tech to coffee to liquor to just just yeah. We've been in the tech world yeah. for a long time, so. We'll never like the tech will always make its way back in, but it's interesting, sure. right? Because for me, coffee runs the tech world. Just yeah. <laughs> there's always that there's oh, that yeah. longstanding yeah. joke. NT NT. Yeah, like, what's a yeah. what's a you know like a developer is a, a machine that turns coffee into code, right? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So right. it's coffee yeah. and whiskey and liquor are intertwined with the tech world because. It's also very demanding, and so you got to get the coffee to get yourself up yeah, in the I morning get and get get cranking, and then it really helps to have a nice glass of whiskey at the end of the day after a long, stressful day. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, awesome. Well, thanks so much, you guys. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks fun. again, Randy. We'll definitely bring you back in the future. Really appreciate you coming on. And for our listeners, we hope you're going to join us again for our next show. I'm not even sure who our guest is going to be on that next show yet. We'll find out soon. Until then, have a great day and be good to each other.
Take care.